Well, thank you, Larry. It's a real pleasure to be here. <clears throat> it truly is. My mom and dad grew up in Madison. My dad's from Junius. doesn't exist anymore, so I've got South Dakota roots. I've been to this state several times. And I'm glad to be here today, right where the action is. What I would like to do, since our group is of manageable size, uh, first of all, uh, can you hear me okay? All right. Uh, I'd first of all like to acknowledge Howard Coker, uh, who's done uh, a life's work here in this region. And I'll comment about our work a little bit later in the presentation. I'd like to get a feel, though, for what you want to know, why you're here, or how I can help you. I'm tempted not to show the next slide. It, it, it kind of shows the roadmap of what I'm going to talk about today, at least what the presentation is. But I'd like to get an idea of what's important to you so I can be sure and cover those points in my presentation today. So as you think about dams and sediment management and those issues, think about that for a minute. And, um, and then I'll ask you, what is it you'd like to know, better understand, or things of that nature? Chat with a neighbor if that'll help, and I'll give you about 30 seconds or so, and then I'll ask you what you want to hear. Well, it's a quiet classroom, and that's fine. That's fine. Any ideas from any of you? What you'd like to hear? Why you're here? Better understand what? What? How can I help? Yeah. How do we manage the obvious sedimentation problems that are affecting all of us? And here at Gavin's Point. Yeah, and upriver. I'm from Niagara, so and we town has moved twice because of it. Uh, We've got current problems with, we had two boat ramps where tourists came in. We now have one that only works under high water situations. It's sedimented in, and we're having trouble getting the state of Nebraska to help us clear the sediment out of the boat ramp, and that chokes our economy is what it is. It's a, we're a tourist town, mm -hmm. and it really hurts us badly. Okay, good. I'll be sure and address that. Uh, the shorter answer is the core, okay? But I'll come back to that. Okay, other uh, ideas or things of concern? Yes? Dave Mingo from the city of Yankton. Just, uh, we all understand the sedimentation uh, issues and how it's progressing. Um, it would be nice to stop it, but realistically, how do we delay the inevitable? And uh, also, what opportunities do we have to uh, help our community uh, take advantage of, of what the lake is evolving into? Okay. Why don't you give me an easy one, huh? <laughs> Similar to Dave's, um, I'm interested to know in your presentation and if you have any uh, prevention measures to slowing the sedimentation coming in the reservoir yeah. more so than removing it. Okay. It has created a recreational opportunity up in that delta. It has, yeah. And I'm, I'm not suggesting that doesn't have any value, but um, uh, I certainly would like to see us slow it down. Okay. All right, Larry? Lynn Amsack, uh, we made a conscious decision probably four years ago or so that we were going to focus on Lewis and Clark Lake because of the significance of the sedimentation here and the high visibility, you know, there's other reservoirs that have sediment problems, but it's still under the water. Here it's on top. So uh, we made that decision to focus in this area as a result. And uh, certainly we have concern for the city of Yankton folks and those that live around here that uh, as that sediment moves downstream, that more and more of that wonderful reservoir that's here is going to be impacted. I've asked people in presentations, have you ever been to Yankton on the 4th of July or riverboat days? And uh, some of them say no, but uh, I can't imagine 
the activity that we have here now not happening someday in the future when all we see is sandbars up there. Okay. All right, well, let me uh, show you what I plan for. And then we can skip around a little bit. Your concerns that you've shared with me in the last minute or so all are right here. What can be done? That's actually the last part of my presentation. I can skip to that. And then we can come back and go through the rest if that would be of interest. Should we do that? Let me put this in context and address the last point for a minute. The Missouri River here at Gavin's Point is at the terminus of the Sand Hills of Nebraska. Thousands of square miles of sand. And you've got rivers that uh, hardly ever flood. The Dismal and the Loop in Nebraska. I don't know if there are others in South Dakota. There is essentially an infinite supply of sand upstream from this location. The Niobrara collects a lot of it. I've measured the sediment transport rate in the Niobrara uh, River myself. We had a team of students and professionals strung across the Nebra uh, Niobrara River upstream from Spencer Dam. We measured on that day 2,000 tons per day of sediment moving past our location. So there's 2,000 tons a day of sediment moving down the Niobrara River. And it eventually drops out uh, around Niobrara, now upstream, or in higher floods, it'll go farther downstream. To stop it is impossible. We can't stop the sand hills. It's a natural phenomenon. It's, 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 it's what happens. What can be done, therefore? Our options are slightly limited. The key is the Corps of Engineers. And um, what they do is when damages occur, they pay for the damages. Because there's nothing they believe they can do either. Now, you're familiar with a study that was done a couple of years ago about flushing, flushing Gavin's point. Let's see if I can go to that part. So what can be done about Gavin's point? There was a study done, and, 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 and they looked at a hypothetical question. And when, when they funded this question, I told them immediately, it's not going to work. Why are you even looking at this alternative? It won't work. The idea is to open the gates at a high rate of discharge. 70,000 CFS, 88,000 CFS, and you know what that does to the downstream reach. And that is supposed to move the delta forward and through the dam and get the sand moving downstream. The problem is that the gates at Gavin's Point Dam are 20 feet above the stream bed. And in this simulation study, the only thing that moved downstream was silt and clay. Sand moved downstream, but it stayed low because it's heavy. So what can be done? We're talking about astronomical costs. What can be done? You can replace the existing gates at Gavin's Point with gates that extend to the stream bed. And then you can reoperate Gavin's Point, not for hydropower, recreation, aquatic habitat, but you would operate it for sediment management. And what that would do is drain the reservoir every year for several months while that sand starts coming through. After a series of years, maybe a decade, the sand would reach those low-level outlets and start moving downstream. You could establish an equilibrium across the dam that way. But all your recreation as you now know it would be changed forever. The beneficial recreation that you're seeing upstream would diminish. But, but that's the magnitude of the problem. And so one idea is to look at gates that extend down to the stream bed. It can be done. It's only a matter of cost 
and political will. In this case, it would require literally an act of Congress to change the objectives of operating Gavin's Point. Because the Omaha district downstream always tells you, we can't do that, we can't do that, we have defined objectives. And they must meet those objectives, they're mandated by Congress. The other thing that could be looked at, and I'm not sure how much this has been considered seriously, Howard and I published a paper in 2009 that talked about a 50-year long project with four phases. One of the phases would be to mechanically move sand from that delta out onto the floodplains, the submerged floodplains, and move the sand downstream mechanically. This would require equipment and technology that right now doesn't exist. It would require our best Yankee ingenuity to invent some technology to inexpensively move very large volumes of sand. But that's outlined in this paper, would require no modification of the dam. Now what could be done at Niobrara? Unfortunately, that's a real hard one, isn't it? You've got 2,000 tons a day coming down. You can't stop it. It's like interest on a loan. Every day, every night, it's coming downstream. There's nothing you can do to stop it. Spencer Dam, built in the 30s, quickly filled up with sediment, and they began sluicing sediment decades ago. Spencer Dam is now not even hardly a blip on the map as far as sediment goes because it's full and it passes through. So imagination, again, can uh, be used. The core can simulate when and where sedimentation will get worse in Niobrara. They can do that. They should be able to tell you how many years, decades you have until this or that happens. And then your imagination comes into play. Do you build a small dam, like, um, let's see, a breakwater uh, around your protected area with gates that open and close when you want to go in and out in that marina, for example? Local protection and isolation might work. But you need to know where and when, and the core is the key. They can tell you that. They need the will to do so. So far, what they've done is simply condemned land and bought it. Now, what can be done here in Yankton? How many years before the Yankton days, the, the uh, ferry days? The Corps can also tell you that. And even our poster in the back of the room already predicts when the Delta will arrive where, so you can get an idea of Jim when. did some work uh, to show us that. Yeah. How to protect this town of Yankton? Again, the key is the core. Working with them and saying, we want more than just having our land bought out. Let's work together and look at a localized project to see if there's anything that, that can be done for Yankton. Because the sediment delta, will, will, it, it's on its way, right? Gavin's point and sedimentation issues are the worst in the United States. Congratulations. <laughs> You've got the poster child for this issue in the US. Now, have I addressed some of those questions and concerns a little bit? What other questions do you have about that that I can go into and then we can jump back to the beginning? Do you have like a time frame roughly where the practical use as we now recognize Gavin's point would become, you know, when, when so the tip where, where the sediment would come up, I mean, is it 50 years or 100 years? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Um, this reconnaissance I, I don't know. Um, the Omaha district might have a handle on that. But it, it's not going to impact hydropower. Even when the delta approaches the dam, they can still generate hydropower. Not as much. What will be affected is recreation and flood control. Those two things. Any follow up? You do not see pretty say sedimentation to natural phenomena. And uh, you do not see a way we could go upstream of London, just take the Niagara River and stabilize those shoreline banks to uh, prevent sedimentation coming in. Yeah, that's a good question. And it really gets down to this question. 
Where does the sand come from on the Niobrara? Is it from the watershed or is it from the stream banks? And in the sand hills, it's primarily from the stream banks because there is so little surface runoff due to very high infiltration rates in the sand hills. To protect hundreds of miles of sand banks, really hard. It's, it's really hard. Um, not only is it expensive, but water has a propensity to find a way around stuff. In central Nebraska, the story goes that a farmer accidentally drove his tractor in the Platte River, went back to get another one to pull it out, and by the time he got back, his tractor was gone, sunk down into the sand. My own experience of that occurred several years ago on the reservoir above Spencer Dam. We were doing surveys of the deposits there with NPPD, Nebraska Public Power District. We're out on an airboat, and the airboat hit a submerged sandbar and tipped over dumping my graduate student and, and Mike Gutzmer into the water. Within minutes, that airboat was gone. Underneath the sand, moved downstream, crushed, never saw it again. Fortunately, the guys got out. To protect that many miles of sand stream bank, it, it's, it's just almost, I, I won't say impossible, but almost. Besides other things, the material to protect the stream banks is hard to come by in the sand hills. There's nothing bigger than a grain of sand out there, nothing. And so transporting whatever it is you're going to put in the river becomes an issue. I don't think, I don't, I don't think um, that will do it, just being honest. Okay. Well, I don't, I, I don't mean for this to be a depressing situation or a downer, uh, but I'm trying to be really straightforward with what I know because I'm objective. I don't have a personal interest here in any way. I just want to understand that the system, modified as it is, and what can be done about it. Well, that's helpful. I mean, what you're saying is it's really the stream bank. It's not putting buffer strips to catch sediment coming in. Is it really going to happen? I don't, I don't, I don't think so. You, you've been in the sand hills. Um, it, it rains two inches and nothing runs off. That's where our Ogallala Aquifer is born. You know, the water goes straight into the ground. Now that's not to say that there are um, that there isn't sediment and gullying going on. It, 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 there is, but sand bed streams tend to meander, wind around naturally, and in so doing, they take banks with them. It's part of the process. Um, yeah, there, there's four phases to this, four phases of the proposed work. The first work is, uh, the first phase lasting uh, 10 years or more, would be to use mechanized equipment to take um, quite a bit of the sand off the delta, say half of it, and redeposit it laterally in the submerged floodplains, because right now it's in the channel. What we have is we have the Missouri River Channel, and, and that's impacted by Gavin's Point because the water is higher. And then we have the floodplains, so it looks like this. So the water is above the floodplains. The idea is to move the sediment out of the channel, store it on the floodplains. Going to require something that we don't presently have. The second phase is to take the remainder of that delta, a lot of it, and move it downstream toward the dam. The study done by the Corps showed that flushing won't work. Flushing will move the very fine sediments downstream, but not the sand. So with the existing gates, the only alternative you're left with is to move it mechanically. And that would be using machinery that yet has to be invented. Because we need to move unbelievable amounts of sand inexpensively. The third one, the third phase then, is to begin to operate the dam to pass sediment downstream. Now that means that the sediment near the dam will be 20 feet deep and up near the top of the gates. Now I don't know what impacts that would have on recreation, for example, et cetera, but that's, that's how the only way 
sediment can move through the gates is if the reservoir is full up with sand to the gates. And then the fourth phase is just to operate it ad infinitum. Yes, the pipeline is part of one of those phases of moving sediment. Yeah. But you still need to fill up the reservoir with sediment. We, we need to take sand and redistribute it. Don't like where it is right now, need to move it around. That's a lot of sediment. That's a lot of sand. And we need stuff that'll do so inexpensively. And right now, we don't have it. A dredge is, is a joke, right? So small compared to what we have going out there. OK, well, uh, this has been a little bit unorthodox so far, but I really wanted to be sure before I left today to try to address exactly why you're here. Now, yes? Just a question so I understand. Are you using sediment and sand interchangeably, or is that two different products you're talking about? I appreciate the question. I apologize for using them without defining them. Sediment refers to all sizes, clay, silt, sand, gravel, cobbles, boulders, all of it. Sand is a subset of sediment consisting of a size class we're all familiar with. Okay.